We are continuing on uh, 40% of the way through jQuery. We had a semi shorter stream, not, not quite. It was longer than anticipated. Uh, we made it 42% of the way through before having to come to screeching halt. Section 3, dynamic HTML, modifying HTML elements. I think we left off like halfway through section 6, section 7. Whichever one we last complete, we're going to do gonna do an overview up to that point. So we made it, we just made it to section 7. No. We made it to section 7, but we didn't, we couldn't figure it out. I was struggling with the highlighted issue. So we're going to do a quick overview, not not through the, uh, well, we, we know what our overviews are like. Just looking over the code leading up to section 7. Quick little refresher. We're going to ignore all this nonsense, and really we're just going to reflect on this bit right here. The script.js tab, and just briefly run through that. So we set up an h1. Was it variable selector? Little kitty, please stop clawing my thigh. We set that up. Here we see the document ready function. Your targeting body. We were appending paragraph. Okay. Script.js, document.ready, you're targeting the ID one dot after div 1.5. Okay, success. Next. See, we're, all, we're all ready to four. We just need to get to, to six. Brief little overview. Just to get our bearings, dollar document dot ready function one dot after paragraph one point five. So we're doing one dot after paragraph five. Then we're doing one dot after paragraph, and then we're doing two dot after paragraph. Each one trickles down, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. They gave us the green check mark for this, so we're going to count that as that's what they wanted. Five, removing elements. Document dot ready function, one dot after p, well, one dot after paragraph, div 1.5. One dot after p, and then two dot after paragraph, and then we removed paragraph, paragraph dot remove. Good, good, good. Okay, next. And we ended up here. All right. Modifying classes and content. Since this was the last successful one, I actually am going to read through all of this while we glance over this guy. All right, from the top, adding and removing classes. We've got chat open. Good. <clears throat> we are all set. Adding and removing classes. We don't have to limit ourselves to adding or removing entire elements. Though we can fine tune our jQuery superpowers to alter classes, CSS, and even the contents of our HTML elements, let's start with classes. jQuery includes two functions, dot add class and dot remove class that can be used to add or remove a class from an element. Hold on, hold on. Let's start with classes. jQuery includes two functions, dot add class and dot remove class, that can be used to add or remove a class from an element. This is great if, for example, 
you have a highlighted class that you want to apply an element when clicked. $selector.add class, class name in quotes. $selector.remove class, class name in quotes. Where selector is the HTML element you want, and class name is the class you want to add or remove. Okay. Remember, you aren't selecting anything, you're modifying your element. This means you don't need the hashtag or the dot before your class. Instructions. Okay, instructions. Now that we think of it, the highlighted class seems like a great idea. This guy. Okay. The highlighted class seems like a great idea. We've supplied the HTML and CSS in the script.js tab and the jQuery code necessary to make your text div highlighted when click. Make sure to click submit, then click highlight me too to see the results. Hint. Your code should look something like this. Document.ready function, select click function, this dot function class. Where select is the HTML element you should target, in this case the text. That should be hashtag text. Function is the jQuery function you should use to add a class. which would be dot add class and class is the class name you should add in this case highlighted in single quotes although highlighted in double quotes would probably function as well we'll read the instructions once more now that we think of it the highlighted class seems like a great idea we've supplied the html and css in the script.js tab Add the jQuery code necessary to make your hashtag text div here hashtag text make your hashtag text div highlighted when clicked. So we've got ID title, ID text, classes highlighted. We want this to have a class. We want this div with the ID of text have a class of highlighted as well when clicked. We've got title, we've got text. This has the class of highlighted makes it all kinds of fun and we want that to be applied highlighted me too when clicked okay this is what we had before we're just going to reset the code we're going to pretend like that doesn't exist it will be very similar to this which is cool so from the top dollar document dot ready function well let's do a semicolon first function empty parentheses trusty curly braces drop that a line indent here's where the magic happens dollar parentheses Single quotes or double? We'll do single for now. Dot click. So when clicked, there will be another function with its own set of confusion. And 
that'll go in as well. Dollar parentheses. Now, since it's in regards to this, ta-da, we get to use this. Have that option. Add class. Which has single quotes. And I believe this will be yeah, add class. Now what were they saying? Make sure to click submit then okay. And we think the highlight no 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 no. Remember, you aren't selecting anything, you're modifying the element. This means that you don't need the hashtag before your the hashtag or the period before your class. So that means whatever ends up here, which will be highlighted, technically dot highlighted, doesn't need that. But this still gets it. So hashtag text equals just highlight it. Ideally, let's give this a shot. We're going to do save and submit first. Make sure to click save and submit, and then click highlights to see the results. And you know what? I think yesterday, the one, I don't know if I had all of this in the exact configuration, but I know I'm, I'm pretty sure I clicked over here in the results section before hitting save and submit. So that may have thrown stuff off. So we're going to do save and submit. Now we're going to click. Highlight it. Sure. Back to editor. That was green. You know, I guess it was going to change the red to the yellow. Or uh, the red, da, da, da. I thought it was going to change the blue, highlighted me too, to the red, I'm highlighted, from that cursive font to the uh, sans serif font. But I see now, closer look, it's that yellow halo. That's what they're talking about. So they're, that's the, the highlighting which is highlighted yellow. But I was expecting like a, a font class change. You added a mean, right? So I was looking for that yesterday. Didn't get that. No. Did we get that? Well, six. We did complete six yesterday, and we got the green check mark. And now we're on seven, which we were on seven today. Okay, we, we've good. We're good. We've blended. We are continuing on. We are now making progress. And at least we have a, a, a better understanding of yesterday, what exactly happened. So it was that yellow highlighting that we added. Okay, good, good. You hear that, little kitty? Hey, what are you doing? No sneezing. No. <clears throat> okay, if we can breathe. Toggling classes. What if we want to toggle a class back? Uh, back and forth, though. That is, what if we want jQuery to automatically check to see whether our text is dot highlighted, so that when we click on it, it asks the class if it isn't there and removes it if it is. As you probably guessed, jQuery includes a toggle class function that does exactly this. If the element is called on, if the element it's called on has the class it receives as an input, uh, dot toggle class removes that class. If the target element doesn't have that class, dot toggle class adds it. Ta-da! Instructions. Change your add class to a toggle class. Click your text a bunch of times to see how it turns out. Oh wait, change your add class to toggle class and click on your text a bunch of times. Okay, cool, cool. So all we're doing is changing add to toggle. Not too difficult. Toggled and submit. Fuckers. Give me a green one. There. See? On, off, on, off. It's that 
That yellow cloud, are we acknowledging this? <laughs> That's what we're changing. Not the blue to red, but the yellow highlight that the red has, and that's what we gave to blue. Crazy, right? Okay. Good, good, good. All is well. Onward, section 8. Changing your style. What if we want to fine-tune individual CSS property values, though? Remember style height 300 pixels, width 300 pixels? jQuery makes it a snap, because resizing elements is so common, jQuery has a specific dot height and dot width function that can be used to change the heights, heights and widths of HTML elements. For instance, $div dot height 100 pixels, $div dot width 50 pixels would give all divs on the page a height and width of 100 pixels and a width of 50 pixels. jQuery also includes a general purpose dot CSS function that takes two inputs. The first is the CSS element to alter the second is the value to set it to, for example, d d d d d d d dollar. Actually, we'll need to scroll through that to see the whole thing. Dollar div CSS background color, comma, and the is that hexadecimal? Yeah, no, for GB hexadecimal. Can't remember. Can't remember. I should. Haven't had to do CSS in, I don't know, 70 plus days? D to D, D to D to D. Definitely hexadecimal. Way cool. Uh, RGB is the three. It's the zero to 255, is it? Yeah, RGB is the three sets. So number zero to two fifty five, comma zero to two fifty five, comma zero to two fifty five versus hexadecimal is the group of six digits. The first two indicate the first color code, and you've got the middle two, and then the last two. But uh, we're good. Back on track. Just haven't had to use that in a while. Um. With all divs on the page a green okay all this div dot blah background color would give all divs on the page a green background color and you can modify any element css attributes this way instructions that's a little low hint let's get some practice in change all the divs in our html document so it has a height of 200 pixels and a width of 200 pixels and a border radius of 10 pixels Let's make this happen immediately without need, uh, without the need for a click. So we've got dollar div. No, dollar doc. Dollar doc. It's already happening. Document ready. Function D to D D to D to D. We are gonna have one div dot something effect. It's width, height, and border radius. So, cool. Mm. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Trigger happy, trigger happy. We're good, we recovered. I know we should just type out each one, but why not copy? Uh, we're gonna do do div in the carrots div in the carrots carrot divs 
Maybe not. I think it's just div. Yeah, just div. Just div. And if we need to add carrots later, we can. Right now, we're going carrotless. Lack, serious lack of carrot right now. Uh, the first one was height, was it? What did they want? They wanted... Height. Width. And border radius. I wonder if we'll need quotes for these. With the pixels, so PX at the end. Hmm. Yep, yep, look at that, look at that. PX in quotes. You know what, and I think they specified that early on in one of... Maybe, it, yeah, maybe it was probably the first section, section one, the first day, like three or four days ago now. Uh, pretty sure they mentioned that it would always, everything would be in quotes, regardless, even numbers. At least I think that's, oh, no, because we've had things where it's comma, number. Actually, it's been more like number, but still. Those are for certain parameters. Anyways, reflecting, and I was throwing 150. That's not the case. It's 200 pixels and 200 pixels. Order radius 10. Mm, yeah. I feel like there's something missing from this one. Uncaught reference radius is not defined. Hmm. Order. I'm not sure then. Ah. jQuery also includes general purpose CSS function. Change some stuff. Maybe. Another percentage. Order. I do recall, I am just beyond stumped right now. Copy. Changing your style, Code Academy. Let's see. Hey, oh, don't worry, little cat. Just me. Changing your style, Trouble. It is general. 
It is the dot CSS one. Son of a bitch. Fine. You're right there. We were at the edge. So. Jquery also includes a general purpose CSS function that takes two inputs. The first is the CSS element to alter, and the second is the value to set it to. For example, background color blah would be CSS in general, border radius, comma, in quotes, 10 pixels. Ta-da! There you go. So let's do dot CSS. Opening bag, quotes, quotes, comma, back, base, and pixels. There we go. Look at that. All better. Crisis averted. Save and submit. Green check mark in the bag. Thank God. That was. That was, that, that was bad. Okay. We almost didn't make it out of we're on section 9 of 14. Beautiful, beautiful. Slowly making progress. Modifying content. Finally, we can update the contents of our HTML elements, that is, the bit between the opening and closing tags. Using the .html and .val functions, HTML can be used to set contents of the first element match it finds. For instance, div.html will give the html contents of the first div it finds and div.html i love jquery will set the contents of the first div it finds to quote i love jquery dot val is used to get the value of form elements for example dollar input colon checkbox colon checked dot value would get the value of the first checked checkbox that jQuery finds. Okay. So it's kind of searching for stuff and then we can apply apply changes from there. Sort of. Kind of fuzzy. Let's continue on. What do they want us to do? Instructions. We've added a paragraph to our HTML document Use the .html function to set its text to jQuery magic in action. Don't forget the exclamation point. So I'm about to change blah script. Let's do this. I, I'm assuming we still do the document dot or the dollar document dot ready. I don't know why we wouldn't. There have been very few where they want just just the thing, just whatever that is. They might want it. Mm, what should I do? Should I do that? Life choices, difficult. We're going to go with document and see if they laugh at us. Document dot ready. Function. Empty, curly, base, back, um, dollar, parentheses, quotes, period, noise, followed by empty parentheses, semicolon. What do we get to shove in here? Div, right? We added a paragraph, your HTML document. Use the HTML function to set its text to jQuery. So, paragraph, three shirts P. That's all we're doing. Crap, is it just P or is it quote P? That seems a little inception y, right? Kind of overkill. We could probably get away with just single quote. We're going to do just P for now. We'll do the dot HTML that they reference. Well, function set its text to jQuery magic in action. 
with the exclamation. We're just going to copy all that noise and shove that right in here. Bing, holy shit, it changed. Did we see that? Look at that. Look at that. Let's get rid of... Eh? Eh? About to change? Gone. Normal day in Code Academy for said paragraph, and then all of a sudden, BAM! Parenthesis. Slaps it in the back of the head, and it changes. jQuery magic in action. All over that parenthesis. Didn't even see it coming. Look at that. Look at that. About to change. And it did. Pretty cool, right? Awesome. Let's continue on. Green check mark. Mastering manipulations. Setup. Alright, time to apply our new... Did we make it into a new section? We did. Okay. Last section. Beautiful. All right. It's time to apply our newfound knowledge. In this section, we'll build an interactive to-do list. Laser beam. Right? No? Austin Powers? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Uh, interactive to-do list that will add items to a checklist and remove them as they're checked off. The check mark equals death. It is an omen means completed forever. All right. We've provided the necessary HTML and CSS. You'll provide the jQuery. You know the drill. Get your document dot ready. I guess see the, that's funny. Laugh, damn it. This is as good as their jokes are going to get. Uh, we have HTML. Beautiful. Lots of, lots of noise happening there. Style. Uh, stylesheet.css h2 form we've got hashtag button and dot list good good everything a growing programmer needs here it goes dollar document dot ready something or other function empty empty semicolon space city space ah no bad good slap the keyboard um is that it or did we already surpass what we needed to do we were just Praying. You're just work. That is all. So next. Green check mark. Beautiful. Eleven fourteen. I just and they're they keep referencing Arnold Schwarzenegger, and it makes me chuckle when I do the voice when I read uh, the header in my head, because all I can think of is the movie. Click the, <laughs> click the button, do it now. I don't know if that's directly Schwarzenegger, but whenever I see any anything spelled out quite like that, that's all I can think of. Hey, little cat, what are you doing? What? Yeah, sleeping? Yep, that is a yes. Okay. You'll notice we've set up an HTML form from grabbing the user's input. We'll need to store the user's input in a variable, which will allow us to append it, uh, append that input to the body of the HTML document later on. You can set a variable equal to the contents of the input field using dot val, like so. Get the value from an input, variable input equals dollar single quote, input, bracket, name equals checklist item, dot val. There's a whole lot going on there. One, our selector finds our specific input using a CSS selector on our checklist item input. So our variable input equals input within the bracket, name equals checklist item, followed by the dot val. We call dot val to get the value of the field. 
Let's open the hint instructions. Let's create a dot click event handler for our button element. Okay, that would be this guy. All right. Let's create a duck click event handler for our button element. Make sure you pass it a function. Inside your function, create a variable to add and set it equal to the contents input field. Your code should look something like this. I was going to say it should be about two lines, starting with dollar button in quotes dot click function, and then the variable whatever it needs to be. So let's at least get, let's continue on with the skeleton. Uh, something about something we just said it, oh, dollar. Mm, button. Dot. Click. My colon function D -d 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 -d. now in the hint they don't write they don't have a dollar sign they just have variable which is fine by me variable to add is what they're suggesting but I don't know if that's just a placeholder inside your function create the very okay create the variable to add and set it equal to the contents of the input field so that would be input blah checklist right checklist item very similar to this is that yeah it is input add equals dollar something uh quotes that gets semicolon actually that gets a couple things um there's still the dot we'll we'll, we'll get there we'll get there so dollar input brackets no Brackets name equals the whole checklist thing. Checklist item. Checklist item. End quote. Dot val. Empty semicolon. Okay. Let's see how they feel about that. Save and submit code. Green check mark. Awesome. We are on 12. Append to body. Perfect. Now we want to add our HTML element to the document. We can do this using our handy dot append function. Let's go ahead and append to our div with the dot list class. We'll append a div with class equals item since we'll, uh, since we'll want a way to target our appended divs later when we remove them. A to-do list is no good if we can't check things off it. We'll want the contents of our div to be the contents of our input field, which will be saved in the variable to add. That means when we append, we'll want to append, in quotes, div class equals item, in quotes, plus to add, quotes again, Closing div tag. All right. Instructions. Go ahead and dot append a div with class item, similar to this, to the list of your div dot h uh, to the to the dot list div of your HTML doc, and then make sure to click your button to add an item. The exercise will wait for you to do so. All right, so I think now where are we putting this? 
dot pen list class item who's doing what now go ahead and dot append the div with class item to the dot list div of your html make sure to click your button to add an item so we got our, our our button that we've targeted we have our click function we've established a variable but now it needs to continue doing more stuff and it's going to be doing this. Let's look at the hint. We need to alternate quotation marks here since HTML string your appending needs to be in quotes, but so does your class name. The example in the instructional text above is one way to do this. I'm going to do double quotes on the outside, single quotes on the inside. Don't know why. They've got a vice versa, single quotes. Maybe that's better to do. Do single quotes first and then double on the inside. I don't know. This is our third day of... Our third, fourth day of jQuery. Fourth day of jQuery. Third lesson. Okay. Uh, I, I feel like I'm supposed to add basically this. I just don't get that. I don't think I am. I think it's supposed to look more like this. This is all awful. This is this is bad, bad signs. Okay, good, good, good. Yes, all is well in the world. Um, dollar. We're just gonna go with our gut instinct. Dollar. Div. Was it in carrots? It was in carrots. Div class equals, oh, one equals, single quotes, item? Not item. Nope, it is item. The class is item. But here they have it in double quotes. Oh. The internal dilemma of single versus double, that is not comfortable at all. Dot append and uh, go ahead and dot append div Get the dot list. This feels awful. Awful. I don't even know what I'm looking at anymore. Uh, dot list. This does not feel good. Uh, okay, we're going to do something to do list. Fix code. Yeah, they do not like anything I just did. Save and submit. Errors across board. Make sure to use dot append your item, your dot list. Did I miss something? Did I need to have another button-like function copy? <laughs> Perhaps I did. Perhaps There was dot list dot click dot append. Me, that's better. Let's try that. Fix code. Yeah, this also seems shockingly awful. 
Good, good, good. Yes, let the confusion consume you. Uh, append to body. We are going to Google that out of this. Yeah, let's close that. Let's go to the forums and hope the best. Okay. Append a body. Zero votes. Append a body. Code. Mine is not working, but was accepted anyways. Classy. In true Code Academy style. Confusion and success simultaneously. Beautiful. We wouldn't want it any other way, would we? All right. The code I used is document ready function dollar or uh, pound button dot click variable to add input name checklist value. Oh, dot list dot append. And then they had the Lust add. I got the error. Uncaught syntax. Ex unexpected identifier when I click. I don't know why it's accepting your code, but you've forgotten A on line 2. Oh, a, close the, a closing parenthesis on line 2. If you run it with the blank, it should run normally. I don't know about the pull stuff. I don't know what's happening here. What confusion for Steven. Uh, thank you. It's always the small stuff that does it. Any ideas on this? If you're going on here, I guess you should just checklist them with two capital letters. Yeah, yeah, that's that's awful. That's awful. Good, good. Let's um, let's try the dot list. Mm. There's that. Let's get rid of you. And I don't know if this should be indented or not. We're going to try it without. I don't know if it's just to type something in or run it without. Fix code. Add. Nothing really happens. Save and submit. Uh, looks like you're not appending a div clat. Did we? Oh, damn. Aha! Wait a second. Hold the phone. Looks like you're not appending div class item, in quotes, plus add to plus blah to list. Is that the, is that what I'm missing? Is this what's going in the append? That would actually make a lot more sense. List not append. Oh, fuckers. Z. Uh, this guy. Copy. I'm appending. Fix code. Holy shit, look at that. Oh my god. Fix code. <laughs> we got it. We figured it out. Is that even what I looked at in the other one? Oh, they had the open tag here. And then the confusion on the line before. Followed by other stuff without the div. And it was just nasty, nasty and poorly formatted here. Good. Okay, so that wasn't entirely as helpful as we thought it'd be. It definitely got us going in the right direction, which is nice, but we fixed it. Look at that. We were targeting list. We were appending all this noise. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Way cool. Way cool. It's so fascinating how it all works together. You wouldn't think it would, but it does. All right. Remove what's been clicked. Good. And now we're doing the exact opposite. Uh, great job. Finally, little kitty. Holy hell. What are you doing in my lap? Just freaking chill. What are you? Oh, you're cleaning your claws and your tail.
tail or something. Tiny feline is just freaking out in my lap beneath the desk, so very concerning. Back to coding. Alright, great job. Finally, we want to be able to check items off of our list. You might think we could do this. Uh, dollar, quote, dot item, click function, dollar, this, dot remove. And that's not a bad idea. The problem is that it won't work. jQuery looks for all the dot items when the DOM is loaded. So by the time your document is ready, it's already decided there are no dot items to dot remove and your code won't work. I see. Interesting. For this, we'll need a new event handler, dot on. You can think of dot on as a general handler that takes the event, its selector, and an action as inputs. The syntax looks like this. Dollar, document on, event, comma, selector, function. Wow, they've crammed a whole lot of stuff in there. Okay, event, comma, selector, comma, function, do something, some type of code block. In this case, event will be clicked, selector will be dot item, and the thing we want to do is call dot remove on this. Borderline super confused, but I think we're going to be able to piece that nightmare together. Instructions. Higher, that's okay. Instructions. Complete your programming. Uh, no, complete your program by adding the dot on event handler as described above. It should go inside your document dot ready, but after the outside, your dollar button dot click. Okay, okay, so we're going to sandwich this guy inside the document dot ready. But outside the button click so it's going within the main curly brace it's just not getting trapped within this particular nightmare technically i think it's not getting trapped within here should we do it above the button click or after mm. little kitty what do you think above or below well, you are under the desk, so I guess below is, is your preferred choice. We will do that. We will go below. And within document dot ready, but outside of this guy, I guess we do line six. Let's give that a shot. If it blows up in our face and the whole internet catches fire, then, uh, you know, lesson learned, right? Probably shouldn't do that again. So, in this case, so this is in general what we'll be dealing with. In this case, event will be click. We're going to have document on dollar document on event. So, am I like replacing this or is this a whole second document section? This already feels wrong. It goes inside document already. Terribly confused. Oh, I get it. I get it. I get it. This. No. Fuck, I don't get it. Damn you, Steven. I had such high hopes. I thought I was putting event and selector before function. You know, event with quotes, of course. Selector, and it would look pretty. So, like, yeah, good. That's, that's typo. I thought it was going to end up like that. But that's dot ready, not dot on. You see? You see? So I was wrong. Damn you. Damn, damn, damn. Okay, we'll, we'll figure this out. And little cat left. Even she's lost all hope. Goodbye forever, tiny kitten. We loved you. Uh... Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm gonna shove it down here. We're gonna shove it down here. They keep referencing document, so I'm just gonna believe them. That doesn't feel right at all. Document dot on
followed by event will be click. Maybe it goes above. Is this instructions for all of this? Click and then so forth and other stuff? It might be comma. Selector will be dot item. I feel like it's instructions. This might go above. Followed by function. My spidey senses are telling me this needs to be moved. We'll try it down here just because function. Uh, and the thing we'll want to do is call dot remove on this. So, function. I guess we still do function. None of this feels right at all. Bad, bad times. Function, empty parentheses, curly brace, drop a line. and do something we are calling complete your program handling the dot on as described it should go inside document ready but after and outside your button oh and after and outside your button dot click so i guess we got it so it does go at the bottom okay uh but the thing is dot item and the thing we'll want to call is dot remove on this. I'm just dollar we want to call dot remove on this. Okay, so we put dollar my My noob programmer brain is just, like, on fire trying to put this together. I'm sure it's so basic, but... Remove... Well, that, that's not a word at all. That's not gonna do anything. Remove... Yeah, call dot remove on this. Ah... Uh, okay. So, do I hit... Save and submit... Did you use dot item as the second input or on? Yes. Hey, little cat, you're back. Here to laugh at me like the rest of the world. My terrible programming skills. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you are you are blocking the screen. I know you're tiny and full of love, uh, but if you could move, that would be, that would kind of be super awesome. Because right now we're in, we're in a serious state of confusion here. I feel like we're close. Uh, I also feel like this could just totally fall apart. The document thing, totally throwing me off, right? No? Okay, or you can sit on the keyboard. You can take the desk. And I will just type in my lap. Good, good. Just don't type with your feet in chat, because that would be bad. Um, and you removed something. It was a document, but that was probably wrong to begin with. So... I don't know what else I would do to change this, aside from changing its location. But, I, yeah, this is just, we don't know what's going on. Document, document, let's close you, and let's check, no, 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 your tail is getting caught between my fingers when I'm trying to scroll, and it's just not working for any of us. Copy. Code Academy. We'll check their forms again. So much confusion. Why? We were in section 12, little cat. What were we on? 
No, we're on section 13. Wow, we're really close to the end. Okay. Section 13. Remove what's been clicked. Help. Look at that. It's got a, the lock and the jack mark. Solved. Have a problem. Don't get it. Why the remove function in my code is not working. When I add some things to the list, it will add to the end. Seems correct. Add something. Maybe it's because I just didn't type anything in the add. That could have been... Maybe it's because we didn't do anything. Uh, we'll try fix code. Add. Save and submit. Yeah, no, it's still laughing at us. Good, good, good. The red font really helps. Sense their frustration at us. Uh, add button. But when I add exactly the same things again and press add, nothing has been removed. Here's my code. Code Academy gave me a green confirmation, but I really don't get the remove function. We do have it in the right place. Okay, awesome. Their list is bumped forward, though. <gasps> Dot item, you son of a god damn little kitty, I swear to god. Ah. Oh. This is your fault. You bastard. All right. Let's do this. Save and submit. Green check mark. Beautiful. Um, but th nothing really happened there. Can we do thing with it? Fix. Code. Add. And. Am I supposed to like? Oh, holy god! And when I click on it, it goes away. High five, little cat. No, please. Just at least look at me. And you're yawning. No. You still haven't looked. I'm just going to pet you. <laughs> oh, look at that. My reward, petting a cat. Deal with it. Look at this, look at this. See, we have a cat here. This, this is a tail. We have a living animal in front of us. Yeah, good, good, good. All right, so that worked. We're going to add it again. Haha. <laughs> we don't even need to type fixed code in every time. It just sits there like a badass. Look at this. We can do this all day, little cat. You know why? Because our code is flawless. That's not necessarily true. Um, save and submit. Section 14. Beautiful. You did it. We did it. I mean, with the help of the forum, we, we kind of struggled through it. Uh, I'm going to move you, cat, because you were just all over the place. Uh, you did it. Yes. Great work. You now know... How to dynamically update the content of your HTML page, including adding and removing elements. Now that you can handle manipulating the DOM on the fly, the hard part is over. In the next two lessons, we'll cover a wider range of jQuery event handlers and effects, which will allow you to apply your core programming skills to a, uh, to a variety of challenges. Click Save and Submit Code to complete this lesson. Hot damn, little cat, we are moving on. Congratulations, you finished this course. Modifying HTML elements. Close. Next. We have on the horizon. Up next, jQuery events. We've covered a few jQuery events, such as dot .click and dot .hover. In this lesson, we'll take a closer look at jQuery events and introduce you to even more. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, so this will be for tomorrow. Tomorrow. No, we are not going to break in a song. All right. We will gander at the beginning, though. Review of jQuery events. You know a lot about jQuery events already, but it never hurts to review the basics. The setup almost always looks like this. Document.ready function thing to touch dot event function thing to effect dot effect. For thing to touch is the HTML element you'll click on, hover over, or otherwise interact with. 
And the thing to affect is the HTML element that fades away, change, uh, changes size, or undergoes some other transformation. All right, well, that is our, that's our peak for tomorrow, day 95. Let's see where today, day 94, concludes. day 94 with us currently 6% of the way through jQuery 1,083 points and 147 badges way cool let's go ahead and close out of the stream do 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 stop streaming are you sure you want to stop the stream hell yeah kill it